Everyone knows that prehistoric animals were huge, but does anyone know why? Prehistoric gigantism doesn't just apply to dinosaurs or woolly mammoths. Many animals that still roam the Earth today were terrifyingly massive thousands of years ago. The massive size of prehistoric species has been studied for many years. Scientists have many theories as to what was different back then that allowed these giant creatures to thrive. Out of the many reasons why dinosaurs were so big, some of them may surprise you. Does laying eggs help animals grow larger? Does that mean humans could be giants if we laid eggs? Are only cold-blooded creatures huge? Or did sauropods have long necks for the same reason giraffes do? But before that, let's look at some of the most terrifying prehistoric monsters that roamed our planet for millions of years. Indricotherium was a mammal that lived in the Oligocene epoch about 23 million to 33 million years ago. They are some of the largest mammals to ever walk the Earth. They are the ancestors of the modern-day rhinos, and they could grow to weigh 20 tons. However, unlike the rhinos, they had no horns. They were herbivores and therefore had plenty of food to support their enormous appetites. These giant appetites are what contributed to their extinction due to dwindling sources of food. When the Asian forest that they used as their source of food became replaced by grasslands, they had no chance of long-term survival. In the middle of the Eocene epoch, Andrew Sorkis roamed the Earth in search of something to sink its teeth in. This was somewhere between 45 and 35 million years ago. The available evidence of this magnificent beast is a single skull that was discovered in 1923 in the Gobi Desert, Mongolia. However, the shape and appearance of the rest of its body remain a mystery to date. It's weighed over 2,000 pounds and could grow up to length of 13 feet. Its discovered skull is 3 feet long, though. The large jaws of this mammal made it capable of feeding on prey and even protecting itself from other hostile animals. Before there were birds in the skies, the pterosaurs were the first to do so millions of years ago. These vertebrates flew the skies of the Earth during the Cretaceous period, and by the time they went extinct, they had spread all across the planet. The largest type of the pterosaur species is the Quetzalcoatlus northropi, which is the size of a small airplane at 36 feet across. They are reptilian and first appeared in the scene about 250 million years ago. Their most distinctive feature was their head crests that were made out of soft tissue fussed with horn-like materials and supported by bones. They could have served any purpose from attracting mates, regulating heat and maybe even for defense. This was a rodent from the Dinomidae family, a species of the caviomorph rodent that became extinct about 2 million years ago. Its main habitat was in South America. It is the largest rodent ever known and is believed to have weighed up to 1,000 pounds. It was present between the Pliocene to the beginning of the Pleistocene era. It had an estimated body length of 10 feet and height of 5 feet. Arthropleura was one of the giant insects in prehistoric times. This giant millipede lived during the Carboniferous period about 350 million years ago. Measuring up to 8 feet in length, it was one of the largest land animals of its time. Arthropleura had a segmented body with two pairs of legs per segment. Its exoskeleton was covered in tough plates, which provided protection from predators. The creature is thought to have been a herbivore, and it likely fed on soft vegetation. Megalodon was a massive and predatory sea creature that lived millions of years ago. With its large teeth, powerful jaws, and crushing bite force, it hunted and preyed on other marine animals with great ferocity. Indeed, this fearsome predator was one of the largest sharks to ever exist, reaching sizes up to 20 meters in length and weighing 40,000 kilograms. Despite its tremendous size, however, Megalodon suffered a dramatic extinction at the end of the Pliocene epoch. Now, let's find out all the possible reasons why prehistoric creatures were so, so big. It seems fairly logical that the larger an animal is, the less vulnerable to predators they become. When it comes to dinosaurs, herbivores were massive, therefore carnivorous species had to become larger too to keep up their spot at the top of the food chain. Herbivores, like sauropods, grew larger to protect themselves from predators, but they did so for many other reasons as well. 
and their large bodies and long necks allowed them to reach more foliage for sustenance. Carnivores, like tetrapods, evolved to keep up with the size of their herbivores. This maintained the natural order of the food chain, as dinosaurs continued to evolve. Humans are warm-blooded, along with all other mammals. This means we are capable of maintaining a constant body temperature in a vast array of climates and temperatures. But for a long time, many scientists theorized that dinosaurs, like reptiles, were cold-blooded, meaning they took on the temperature of their surroundings. According to that theory, many large dinosaurs, especially sauropods, who were the largest herbivores, grew larger to keep them cool. The more surface area, the more room they had to cool off, which helped them regulate their body temperature in hot climates. This might also explain the theory of meteors and ice ages, leading to the mass extinction of dinosaurs. Intense changes in temperature are disastrous for cold-blooded creatures. That theory, however, was thrown into question after some scientists theorized dinosaurs were warm-blooded. The theory was further supported when researchers analyzed the chemistry of dinosaur eggshells in early 2020 and discovered the composition correlated with temperatures warmer than the environment, suggesting dinosaurs may have had warm blood like birds rather than reptilian cold blood. Through decades of archaeological research, scientists have been able to pinpoint the disparity in oxygen content over time. In prehistoric times, it's estimated that the oxygen content in the atmosphere was 30%, whereas today our oxygen content is around 20%. That difference could have allowed animals to grow larger and faster. This explains why so many species were larger in prehistoric times. Insects and invertebrates especially benefited from this boost in oxygen, which helped them both grow large and avoid extinction. Some scientists believe that because of the higher oxygen content, cockroaches were able to become the size of house cats. The prehistoric world was much warmer than our own and full of vegetation. The climate was perfect for tons of foliage, which was a food source for the biggest dinosaurs, and with little competition, some of the largest species were able to continue to grow and evolve over time. Sauropods were some of the biggest prehistoric animals, including Brontosaurus, and they also had incredible long necks. Scientists believed that they were gigantic so they could eat more foliage that was previously out of reach. When scientists looked at the biggest prehistoric species, they noticed something revealing. 20 out of 22 species of the largest theropods had bony head ornamentation of some sort, including horns, crests, and knobs. Did these built-in crowns exist just to make dinosaurs look threatening? As scientists continued their research in comparing dinosaur with head ornamentation to those without, they soon realized that dinosaurs with bony head decor had a much higher rate of species survival and evolution, while dinosaurs without them were more likely to become extinct. Not only did these decorated theropods have a better chance of survival, but they also grew to be larger over time. The data suggests that dinosaurs with bony head ornaments may have grown larger because of them over many generations. Scientists aren't absolute certain why, but they hypothesize that the large head ornaments acted as mechanisms for social sexual display used to communicate mating or territorial purposes. A single vertebra from a sauropasadon dinosaur is four and a half feet in length, yet surprisingly lightweight, a discovery made by archaeologist Matt Weedle. He also discovered that the massive dinosaur's bones were up to 90% air, which would explain the lightness. It turns out that some dinosaurs, particularly Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus rex, had hollow bones for the purpose of predatory efficiency. The air in their bones allowed them to have a respiratory system that supported fast metabolism and quick movement, perfect for a predator's lifestyle. Scientists believe birds to be a direct descendant of theropods, which would explain the similarity of their porous bones. Scientists have discovered that in most cases, the larger a mammal is, the longer the gestation period. This puts both the mammal and their offspring at increased risk of harm and birth complications. It also makes it impossible to carry more than one baby at a time in most cases. Dinosaurs avoided these issues by laying eggs and hatching their babies. They were able to lay a lot of eggs at once. Some species would lay up to 20 eggs at one time. This increased the quantity of offspring and therefore the chance of species survival. Also, since the babies grew in the egg outside of the mother's body, they were able to increase in size without the risk of birth complications.